incredible words of, of mercy and kindness. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Despite the excruciating pain that Jesus was in, he demonstrates incomprehensible love and he offers forgiveness to those who crucify him. The weight of sin didn't assuage the compassion and the grace out of Jesus. The debilitating debt didn't cause Jesus to stray from his purpose. In this moment, we are reminded of the magnitude of our own debt of sin and our desperate need for redemption. It is a weight we cannot manage on our own. It is heavy, difficult, and painful. But the cross, as much as it was a symbol of Roman strength and oppression, is also a symbol of victory for followers of Christ. The empty tomb, the wooden cross, crown of thorns, these all remind us that the promise of redemption and reconciliation are real. In the words of John's gospel, so if the the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Jesus freed us from our debt of sin. It came at a great cost. As Jesus hangs on the cross, he's surrounded by mocking crowds and taunting soldiers. Insults and challenges to him to prove his identity as the Son of God by saving himself. And yet, amidst all the mockery and the taunting, Jesus remains steadfast in his mission of redemption. I mean, his example here is a, a tough one to follow, and, and we, we don't always do that. Sometimes it's difficult to stand up to our faith. One time when I was in college around 2008, I was taking classes at River Parish's Community College in Provencia. And in one of my classes, I think it was a history class, the subject of religion came up, and we were talking about science and faith. And one of the students said, science is how the world actually works. And faith is just a crutch for people who aren't strong enough to handle life on their own. Now, I don't usually oppose what another person says, But the reason I was going to college was to pursue a Master of Divinity degree. So I couldn't let that statement pass without making a comment. And I said, no, faith is not a crutch. Science and faith work together. I had to speak up for my faith. But what I said pales in comparison to what Jesus did for us. It wasn't easy when Jesus endured the humiliation and the pain. But he remained focused on his plan The book of Hebrews sheds some light on how Jesus did it. It says, For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let Jesus be your example. Consider the joy that comes from fulfilling your calling and purpose. Consider the eternal joy waiting for you in heaven. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Run the race and go boldly down the road to freedom. Because your debt and my debt has been paid, and we are free. Now looking to Jesus in the last verses from our gospel lesson, we see the contrasting responses of the two criminals that were crucified alongside Jesus. While one criminal joins the mocking crowd in deriding Jesus, the other criminal recognizes his own sinfulness and acknowledges Jesus as the Son of God. And in his humility, the second criminal pleads, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And in response to this simple yet profound act of faith, Jesus offers the assurance of redemption. And he declares, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. This encounter exemplifies the transformative power of redemption and the path to freedom through genuine repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. These two criminals were about to receive the just penalty for their crime, or at least just in the eyes of the Romans at the time. But Jesus comes as an innocent man, a king of the Jews. And one of the criminals was fortunate enough to see through the accusations of the crowd, to see who Jesus really was. His path to freedom and our path to freedom runs through Jesus Christ. Paul said in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And this is true. We have all sinned. But Paul also says in verse 24, 
and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. We have been set free, released from the weight of dead and the sting of death, by the saving work of Jesus' death and resurrection. And as the Gospel of John says, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And so as we come to a close today, let's think for a moment about the word freedom. Freedom is something we hold dear, a value we guard and defend. And yet many of us are enslaved to sin. Jesus gave his life to set us free from all of that. And Jesus' death on the cross offers redemption and freedom to all who believe in him. Just as the criminal experienced the transformative power of redemption in his final moment, we too can find freedom from the bondage of sin through faith in Jesus Christ. The weight of sin and death is one that none of us can carry on our own. That's why Jesus died on our behalf. And through his sacrificial death and victorious resurrection, Jesus offers forgiveness of sin, reconciliation with God, and the gift of eternal life to all who believe in him. So let us embrace this gift of redemption with gratitude and live our lives as a testimony to the transformative power of God's love and grace. May we continually strive to live in the freedom and the joy that comes from being redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. As Easter people, we are free indeed. So let us live lives in the light of Easter with a sense of renewal and hope and joy, even amidst life's challenges and struggles. Let us embody the significance of Jesus' sacrifice in our daily lives, living as people of hope and resurrection power. Let's pray. O oh Lord, we thank you for giving your life so we could have life. Thank you for taking on sin and death so that we could live in eternal freedom. Thank you for taking our debt upon yourself, giving us the promise of eternal life. Help us to live as Easter people every day, sharing the good news of your resurrection with all those we meet. Amen. As we reflect on the profound sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross to pay the debt of sin and secure our freedom, we are reminded of the depth of his love and the extent of his grace. Through his sacrifice, we have been set free from the bondage of sin and death, and our hearts are filled with gratitude and awe. And now, as we prepare to celebrate Holy Communion together, let us remember the significance of this sacred ritual. Just as Jesus offered himself as the ultimate sacrifice for our redemption, he invites us to partake in the bread and the wine, symbols of his body broken and his blood shed for us. As we come to the table, let us approach with humility and reverence, mindful of the immense price that was paid for our salvation. Let us also come with hearts full of thanksgiving, grateful for the forgiveness and freedom we have received through Christ's sacrifice. May this time of communion be a sacred moment of reflection, renewal, and communion with the living Christ who continues to offer himself to us today. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread. He gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This table does not belong to Far Chapel or to the United Methodist Church. This table belongs to Jesus Christ, and all who profess him as their Lord and Savior are welcome at this table. And so I invite the choir to come first, and then the congregation.
and that they might have it more abundantly. Arise and go in abundant life, putting your trust in God. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Rise and go and sure and certain knowledge that Jesus is the way to eternal life. Amen.
Our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Rise and go, knowing that the Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Amen. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Rise and go in the strength of our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. May we who share in this banquet glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation, our life and hope, the one who reigns as Lord now and forever. Amen. And now I invite you to stand and join in our closing hymn, He Lives.
as we go forth from this place, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ remind us of the boundless mercy available to all who believe. As we celebrate the victory of resurrection, may we walk in the freedom proclaimed by Christ himself, knowing that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And may the assurance of God's grace be our constant, constant comfort and strength, now and forevermore, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.